following on from the latest report that the UK is still lagging behind on its climate policy, many question how our individual behaviour really could make a difference if the government isn't moving quicker. Well, we all saw the news pictures last night and we're joined now by climate activist Assad Rehman, UN Ambassador for Climate Change Dale Vince and Liam Norton. These are the pictures I'm referring to from Insulate Britain. That's the climate change activist group which brought the M25 juddering to a standstill for many hours of the day yesterday. And we're going to start with you, Liam. Thanks very much for coming in this morning. Now, this is not a flippant question, OK? I just wonder what makes you and the people who performed that demonstration yesterday clairvoyant. Because how can you possibly know what's in the vehicles that you're holding up for hours? For example, if you just bear, bear with me on this question, how do you know that there aren't parents with a child who's going to an absolutely vital appointment with their cancer specialist? How do you know there's not a funeral cortege and that people are going to their mother's or father's funeral? How do you know that there aren't people going to, to them is a vital job interview, which might actually be to do with helping to save the planet. You don't know any of these things, mm. and yet you're taking huge risks with other people's lives as individuals. What gives you that right and what gives you that foresight? Well, I agree with you that we don't know. So you're completely right. Um, and I don't think it's about what gives us the right. Um, I think it's about what is the reality that we're in at the moment. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that if you... Uh, Sir David King, the chief scientific advisor to the British government, has said that we have... through What we do in the next three to four years will determine the future of humanity. Now, you're an intelligent person, Richard, right? Can you read between the lines of what three to four years will determine the future of humanity? Can you read between and the lines? And you're an intelligent person who's admitting that they're not clairvoyant. Can you explain to me as, say, for example, the parent of a seven-year-old child who has an absolutely critical hospital appointment to deal with their potentially terminal cancer, but a, uh, an appointment that may save their lives, and they find themselves sitting behind one of your roadblocks for hours on end and missing that appointment or, or that treatment. Can you justify that? I'd be furious. Well, then why are you doing it? Because, as I've just said, what we do in the next three to four years will determine the future of humanity. So this is the situation that we find ourselves in. So you're and prepared, that person to, so you're would prepared need to, to risk that, that person you're would prepared need to, to risk that child's cancer treatment and potentially life because you don't know. We're talking about many thousands of vehicles mm -hmm. stuck behind these protesters. By, by the law of yeah. averages, there are going to be critical journeys terrible, that are being interrupted and stopped. Can I give you a definition of something? Yeah. And tell me what you think of it. And, and you are an intelligent person, so I'd like to know what you think. This is a definition. A tendency towards an actual exercise of strong autocratic or dictatorial control over individuals, or severe social regimentation, forcible suppression of opposition, and a belief that the greater cause takes precedence over individual interests. Do you know what that's a definition of? Go on. Fascism. OK. Well, I don't think it's fascist to have a demand of universal care. And that's what Insulate Britain are talking about. What we're talking about is the best value for money for reducing emissions per pound spent. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of proper jobs, meaningful jobs. And we're talking about stopping the deaths of thousands of our old people, which is what happens because old age pensioners have to choose between food or heat. But so that's what's going on in the, the United price? Kingdom people at the moment. In, but, why but, is, but, but Richard, why just is let the, me no, finish. No, I'm coming in on that point because it's, it's a perfectly fair point and I've got a, a perfectly good... Insulate Britain is about why universal is it, why care. Why is it reasonable to be in pursuit of those perfectly understandable aims and ambitions to completely risk the health, the lives and the, not just getting to work on time, but the mm -hmm. kind of scenarios I've outlined, why is that a price that people have to pay in order to support, willy-nilly, your ambitions? Because wh who it's you fascism. should... who Yeah, well, if you want to talk about fascism, right, it's using weak people and using lies, and what we're talking about is a truth, and that's what I'm talking about, and that's what Sir David King's talking about when he's talking about what we do in the next three to four years will determine the future of humanity. What Insulate Britain are talking about is a universal care... That's what we're talking about. And you should get the government on here. You should get the Minister for the Department of Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. Well, we have government ministers on this programme every day. And, and you should be asking them why it is that they're not looking after the British people's interests. And as soon as a meaningful statement is made by the government, do you know how many homes need to be insulated and retrofitted by 2050? It's 1.5 a minute. How many are being done? 
zero. We've got an absolute Liam, crisis in terms of what we need to do to decarbonise our homes at the moment. Is to try and get people to insulate their homes. Is there not a more popular way you could do it than bringing the M25 to a standstill? Um, as, as Richard said, if even one person in one of those vehicles was trying to get to hospital, you've lost everybody. Well, this isn't about who we lose and, and who we gain. This is about you said asking... You that's exactly what it's about. Well, this is about asking the government to get on with the job and they're not doing. And that's what this is about. And, and nobody's speaking about the reality of the situation that we're talking about here. You've been here. talking about it all You've week. You've been talking about melting ice caps, which you should have been doing 10 years ago. But what we're talking about is the destruction of our economy, the destruction of the fabric of our society. What would you say to and the, what we what do in the next the, three what, to what four years to will determine a, what would you how say this the, country... What would you say to the widow of a man who yesterday, and this could have happened, it didn't, but it could have happened, and if you continue with this protest, it could well happen, who died behind the wheel of stuck traffic of a heart attack and wasn't able to be airlifted to hospital, driven to hospital, receive any kind of serious treatment and died in the car behind the wheel after maybe... It took my father 20 minutes to die of a heart attack. Um, in that time, given different circumstances, he might have been saved. What would you... If we could produce a woman in the studio now whose husband died next to her in the car because... They couldn't move. They couldn't get to a clinic or a hospital because of what your guys were doing. What would you say to her? Richard... What would you, you say to her? Richard, a few years ago, I was on building sites with a tape measure and a pair of pliers, mm -hmm. and I've woken up to this crisis, OK? Sorry, you're not answering that question. Yeah, what no, I'm you, about to. You, all right, I'm on. about to. But what I'm saying to you is, why do you think grannies are on the road yesterday? Why do you think that's happening? We feel terrible about the situation that we find ourselves in. This is the way that we've, has been proven to, the, to, to force the government to act, so right? And I would tell that person that they need to go and sue the government for their inaction, and this is criminal. Well, well, before they bury their husband? I would, I would feel terrible for that situation. The but, government but aren't looking enough. after... The not government, terrible enough. The government are not looking after their citizens, Richard. And neither are you. Uh, what we are doing... But neither are you. We've got are a plan. We've got, we've got a plan to insulate Britain. It's going to... It gives you the best value for money per pound spent in terms of reducing emissions. Hundreds of thousands of meaningful jobs will be created. And you think that would come will somebody who missed their pensioners pensioners yesterday because of your protest? We're going to stop... We're, what we're talking about is stopping pensioners freezing to death You're blocking out reality, aren't you? You're well, only, no, no, you're, you're only seeing one aspect of reality. You're in, your in denial of, of you. the reality You're ignoring the, the reality of the individual. You're seeing the reality of the state, as it were, and that's fine, but you're seeing it at the absolute expense of the reality to the individual. And that no. is fascism, I'm afraid. No, I, I think, think you need to face up I to think, that. I think you're confused, Richard, about <laughs> what that word is. at all. It's easy to throw around terms and try to put me on the back foot. Well, of but course what, I'm going to put you on the back what, foot, because, what, you're, because, because but what, what I'm you're talking doing? about, what, you, what Insulate Britain are talking about is universal care, and that can't be fascism. Well, there wasn't much universal care on the M25 yesterday. Well, there was. <laughs> no, there wasn't. If there you was. were stuck in the queue, are you going to carry on? Because with this? ordinary are you people, going to carry on with the this ordinary protest? people that were stuck in that traffic are in the same crisis as you and me, aren't they? And this is what this is all about. The United Kingdom, this, the, this, this, this country of ours, needs to understand that we've got a crisis. So you think we somebody need to, who couldn't get to that? We need to funeral, roll up. We need to roll up. A serious seat. medical Richard, appointment yesterday is going to say me. it's okay because it's for the greater good. You really think that's what they're going to say to you? Pardon? You really think that somebody in the, some of the real-life scenarios that I've outlined today to you this morning, you really think that they're going to say to you, if they have the pleasure of meeting you, yeah, that was OK that I missed my cancer appointment, that was OK that I missed my mother's funeral, that was OK that the funeral cortege got caught up in the roadblock. It didn't matter because it was for your greater, our greater good. You really think it's that's what they're going to say to you? Because you want our homes insulated. Really? Do you, know, do you know that there were pensioners drowning to death in, in Germany? Yes. Yeah. And do you know how much rubbish, 90,000 tonnes from the flooding in Belgium? So this is the reality that we're in. It's a really awful situation that we find Isn't ourselves in. Isn't there another in. way to draw this to our attention? No. Really? really? Yeah. This is it. So okay. there's only one well, way of protesting, and that's to block the traffic. It's not protesting, actually, uh, Richard. It's called resistance. And when the government are being criminal in their inaction, Ordinary people were left with no other option. That's what you see in history. And normal is over, right? And that's what Sir David King means. When he's talking about three to four years and what we do will determine the future of humanity, you need to read between the lines of no, what no that statement means. I don't think it means the suffering of the billions of, of the people. Problem. I think people are wondering how you carry people with you 
when you block the M25 and hold people up for hours and hours at one time. Let's talk to, we've got two other guests on this. Um, Asad Raymond is a climate activist and director of War on Want, and Dale Vince is the UN ambassador for climate change um, and chairman of Forest Green Rovers, the world's greenest football team. Dale Vince, is this the way to persuade people to change their behaviour? Well, look, I can see both sides of this debate has just taken place. Um, and I think that uh, in order to bring about the kind of change we need with the urgency that we need, there's a very fine line to be drawn in terms of disruption to get attention from the government to make the point that they're not doing enough, balanced against the impact on individuals and whether or not that actually puts them off the course. I think it's a problem, a, a, you know, a, a fine line to tread. Um, but, you know, we have to do something because there is an urgency. Um, you know, this is a vital decade, actually, to avoid the worst of the climate crisis. And what we're talking about are the livelihoods of millions of people in the very near future. If we don't act uh, urgently and radically, then we're going to ruin their lives uh, and, and, you know, the economy, the country they live in. The whole world is at risk from the climate crisis. You say that it's a fine line, and if it was simply inconvenience in the way that I would have been inconvenienced yesterday, if I was on the way to cover a story and I couldn't get there, that would be an inconvenience, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. You've heard the scenarios, and they aren't, they aren't silly high-flown high scenarios that I've just outlined to our guest here. That's not a fine line. That's a red line. No, it's a fine line, because you're outlining <clears throat> emotive hypotheticals, and what you're ignoring is the science. The science that says millions of people will lose their lives, will be displaced from their homes, have to flee to, to other countries. You're, you're ignoring all of that. Um, I am not in... ignoring that because I agree with him. I agree that we should be lagging our homes. I agree with all the measures that we should be taking and trying to find the money, because most people can't afford it on their own, and that's going to involve some kind of tax hike, but I agree with him. I, I, I will, I'm already there, but I don't need to see people. And I'm sorry, you may say that these are hypothetical examples, and to an extent they are, but believe me, they are real too. And there are going to be real tragedies as a result of the actions that he's taking. I agree with this point, and I'm not in denial about it, but I think the methods that him and his team are using are completely dangerous. OK, let's ask Asad Rahman, because um, you're a director of War on Want. I mean, you know about the global impact of this crisis. What, what's your view about the threat on the day that a very controversial protest like this will have compared to the long-term impact on the government? Well, as Laura's piece short, we're in the midst of a planetary crisis. Uh, last month, scientists told us it's called red for humanity. Um, and the reality is, of course, governments have long known that the climate crisis is real, they need to act, and they haven't acted. And in fact, emissions continue to rise. We're likely to, we're on a trajectory to over three degrees warming of the planet, where the real question of the future of humanity, humanity hangs in the balance. So the question, yes, you know, have we moved the dial on this conversation? Absolutely. We are having com more conversations about the climate crisis. Are governments listening? Well, we heard yesterday our own prime minister say we're going to dig more and extract more fossil fuels but um, uh, when we should be investing in of course renewable energy and public transport our government policies are too far away either targets are too weak we don't have policies in place so what do we do as as people well first of all i think we have to recognize that, you know, this is a, a structural issue right we have an economy that's built on fossil fuels we have an economic system where laws and rules have been put in place that basically for hundreds of years have said to companies, you can exploit the planet and people to maximise profit and ignore what the damage you do. Okay. And these are really interests. And to shift them, it requires, it requires us as individuals, of course, to be ethical in our behaviour, but it requires us to be active citizens, to be pushing our governments to act in our interests rather than the interest of these big fossil fuel companies. Okie dokie. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Um, you planning more sit-downs on the motorways today? Uh, the campaign's going to be ongoing. Yeah, until... Uh, yes, what, we're, what we're asking for is a meaningful statement from the government that they're going to act on insulating Britain and we'll get off the roads immediately. People's day-to-day okay. -day lives... This is the statement from the government. People's day-to-day -day lives should not be disrupted, especially on busy motorways where lives are put at risk and resulting in traffic delays will only add to vehicle emissions. 
We're investing 1.3 billion this year alone to support people to install energy efficient measures. And our upcoming heat and building strategy will set out how we decarbonise the nation's homes in a way that's fair, practical and affordable. I mean, just on that one point alone, traffic delays, which add to vehicle emissions, you realise that that's what happened yesterday. Susanna, you and I both know that that statement is ridiculous. Well, you, you've said it's ridiculous. I, I'm saying that the point about traffic emissions is, is certainly not ridiculous. Idling well, traffic, because you've held it up for hours, is not healthy for the, our air pollution, is it? Susanna, I, I'll, I'll repeat. You, you know, you're fully aware that what you've just said is ridiculous. And what is ridiculous is it, the 1.3 <laughs> billion pounds of investment. That's what's ridiculous. So it's true. We're talking about so, hundreds of billions, so potentially ridiculous. trillions. So, so Susanna's required. ridiculous because you, Richard, because you say so. Richard, Look, no, Richard, you no, keep listen, you've had a really good crack of the whip and you, you finished up by calling my co presenter. Hun ridiculous. Hundreds of billions of is what's no, required. We are out of time. Hundreds really of are. billions. But, but I do appreciate you coming in billion and taking is it on. Nowhere near what Let's required. cool off and go to near the North Pole with Laura. She's got the weather from the high Arctic.